I was studying architecture for a year and I realized that it was probably more than I could uh, cope with. And I went to Africa to think things over and I saw how people lived and the different concept of time and, and patience and, and it gave me a whole different view of, of work and of possibilities of work. Well, it was the, pl the pleasure of, of touching the material and, and being in control, having a one-to-one rela -one relationship with the project. In 1964, I saw a show that had works by Sheila Hicks and uh, Claire Seisler and Lenore Tony. And it was so exciting to me that I decided to come to the United States because they were American and I had this image that it was happening here. And that's when I started to really be in love with the whole field and, and being here at UCLA and, and then coming to New York. Well, it was really very, very gratifying to have Bloom and Poe discover my work and treat it like art and with respect and work with packers, and, which I had never done. And, and uh, you know, not having to do everything myself, having help with the promotion and, and all this is a wonderful treat and, and has made life really beautiful. I must say that's one of my big surprises now when I see the photos. That I had the, the guts to start such huge commissions. I guess I needed to learn patience and relationship with people, how to, how to deal with the approach, how to talk about my work to people who maybe were not seeing it like I was seeing it. It wasn't just a career, it was my life. My, my husband died, his son died. I mean, we moved to Spain, so there were many, many changes. And, and I, I, I'm glad I had the opportunity to, to kind of grow through that too. And, and maybe I, I did a few less pieces, but I learned a lot of other things. And, and that was a, a very rich time. In the 1980s and true 90s and maybe even a little beyond, it was a very challenging time for all the fiber people. Some of the galleries went to big turmoil. We had the first, uh, Hadler and Rodriguez was the first little gallery in New York. They did a real labor of love and helped us all. And, and then the AIDS epidemic came and that changed. All these galleries disappeared. And, and my gallery in Chicago also changed. The husband died, so the woman decided to just sell photographs and not fiber anymore. All these were changes that couldn't be helped. I have been labeled as revolutionary in the, in the 70s in the way I approached the, the work. And I think it's justified because until then, fiber work was coming more from tapestry history and, and I think we rebelled, a few of us rebelled against the, the format, the flatness, the, the being hung on the wall, things could be on the floor without being a carpet and there were all these things that now seem absolutely are accepted but they, they were not then. What I was arguing about is that you want to give it as much space and life as you can. And being away from the wall, you get a shadow, you get, you get to see the piece maybe from the both sides, from the back and from the front, and hopefully the sides. And all that opens more options. Well, it's exciting and also a little sad to see that the work we did in the 70s is being rediscovered. It's also exciting that more young people are discovering the material and, and using it in a very different way. I think that's really what I'm really curious about is to see what will come next, you know, what is the next step. It's one thing to take the things that we did in the 70s out of their crate, but it's the next step of making something new with the same material or maybe other materials that I'm looking forward to. And I'm really happy to still be around when this second wave is happening. In 2014, Janelle Porter organized a fiber exhibit at the ICA Boston, and it was titled 
fiber sculpture, 1960 to the present, and she had the courage to select my inchworm to put in the show and to put it a floor piece, one of the most difficult ones, and she really responded to it, and, and that was a great, great pleasure for me. It's, it's a, a learning experience all along, the, the work itself and finding a place for the work. It's being able to, do, to manage to do what you really like, and I think that's really a great treat and important. My name is Françoise Grossen, and I'm a fiber artist.